99% of developers don't get concurrency. Picture it, the late Cretaceous period of computing. I was programming in MS-DOS, an OS running in what they called YOLO mode, which was a polite way of saying there were no rules and direct hardware access. I remember interviewing for a big tech giant at the time where I was asked a question that traumatizes me to this very day. I remember the interviewer looking me in the eyes and saying, Hey, Coding Gopher, you put operating systems as a skill on your resume. So kindly, explain to me the difference between concurrency and parallelism. I remember in that moment trying to recall all the OS course content that I learned through osmosis in university, the 2am Red Bull chugging midterm cramming sessions that I had, but I just drew a complete blank. In Gen Z terms, it's exactly the situation of, am I cooked chat? Yes, I was cooked. I couldn't answer and the interviewer left me hanging there like a dangling pointer for a good 10 minutes of silence. But that very experience is the reason I'm making this video. I will make sure that none of you watching this will ever have to face the same pain as I did. I'm going to explain to you what concurrency is, how it's different from parallelism, and do it in a concrete and systematic way. So concurrency versus parallelism. Concurrency refers to a program's ability to handle multiple tasks by interleaving their execution. These tasks progress independently and may be paused and resumed over time. However, they are not necessarily running at the same physical instant. This is called interleaved execution, where multiple logical threads of control share a single CPU core. They do this through time slicing or voluntary yielding, which I'll get to later. In contrast, parallelism means truly simultaneous execution, multiple tasks running at the same time on separate CPU cores or processors. A common source of confusion is that concurrent programs can appear to run in parallel, even when backed by a single thread or core. For example, a single threaded event loop in JavaScript can handle multiple IO events concurrently, despite lacking true parallel execution. On the other hand, a machine learning model training with matrix multiplications can run in parallel across multiple cores or GPUs, exploiting data parallelism to perform actual simultaneous computation. The TLDR is this. While concurrency can be achieved on a single CPU by rapidly switching between tasks, true parallelism requires multiple processors or cores. Concurrency is especially effective for IO-bound workloads because most of the program's time is spent waiting for external resources, disk reads, network responses, or database queries. During these wait periods, the CPU remains idle unless another task is scheduled. With concurrency, multiple tasks can share the same thread or core. While one task blocks on I.O., another can make progress. This leads to better CPU utilization without requiring more hardware. Let's look at this example of concurrency with threading, or interleaved execution. Both threads, T1 and T2, run on the same CPU core by default in CPython. Python's global interpreter lock, or GIL, ensures only one thread executes Python bytecode at a time. Time.sleep simulates I.O. delay. When time.sleep is called, the active thread yields the CPU, allowing the other thread to run. This is interleaving, not true simultaneity. This is efficient for I.O. bound tasks like network requests because threads can make progress during waits. Remember, these tasks run concurrently, not in parallel. They're scheduled in and out, sharing a single core. Today's video is sponsored by Abacus AI. This is Chat LLM Teams. For just $10 a month per user, you can forget juggling multiple expensive AI tools. Chat LLM gives your team one central super assistant with immediate access to all the latest state-of-the-art models, video and image generators, and general purpose and coding agents. We're talking about GPT 4.1, Gemini 2.5, and Sonnet 3.7, and any new model as soon as it drops. And you get far more usage for your money, with about 10 times more tokens than other paid services. Chat LLM integrates directly into your workflow, connecting to Slack, Microsoft Teams, Google Drive, and Confluence. It can interact with your internal documents, analyze data from spreadsheets, and become your team's own knowledge expert. With the Chat LLM subscription comes two game-changing tools, Code LLM and Deep Agent. With Code LLM, you can prompt the AI to build new features. Use Deep Agent to perform real-time, in-depth research across the entire internet, generate custom PDFs and presentations, or even develop and deploy entire websites or applications based on your requirements. If you're interested in using this all-in-one super assistant that is Chat LLM, check out the links in the description and pinned comment. Why is parallelism better for CPU-bound tasks? Parallelism is preferred for CPU-bound tasks where performance is limited by the computation itself rather than waiting for I.O. For example, compressing video, training deep learning models, or computing fractals involve large amounts of math that can be parallelized. In these cases, dividing the work across CPU cores or using SIMD or vector instructions allows multiple instructions to run simultaneously. At the hardware level, this is implemented with multi-core processors, vector execution units, and GPU cores. A practical example is a video encoder that splits a frame into chunks and processes them in parallel across cores. 
Another is a neural network training pipeline, where matrix operations are dispatched to GPU cores for true simultaneous computation. Unlike concurrency, which helps hide latency, parallelism increases throughput by scaling out work across independent compute units. This distinction is crucial when optimizing for performance bottlenecks. Let's take a look at this example of parallelism with multiprocessing, or true simultaneity. Each process, P1 and P2, runs in its own Python interpreter and is assigned to a different CPU core. Tasks run simultaneously and are not just interleaved. Since they have separate memory spaces, there's no GIL limitation. These are ideal for CPU-bound tasks like mathematical simulations, encryption, or rendering. And this is true parallelism. Tasks execute at the same time on different cores. Now for task scheduling, there is preemptive versus cooperative scheduling. The way tasks share execution time is governed by the scheduler, which can be preemptive or cooperative. In preemptive scheduling used by most operating systems, the scheduler forcibly interrupts running tasks after a time slice to give others a chance to run. This enables time-sliced concurrency and ensures responsiveness and fairness, even if tasks don't yield voluntarily. However, preemptive switching incurs higher overhead due to register saving, stack swapping, and potential cache invalidation. It also makes concurrent code harder to reason about due to unpredictable interleaving and potential race conditions. Let's take a look at this example of preemptive concurrency or system-controlled concurrency. The operating system or Python runtime decides when to switch tasks, typically using time slices. So Python, backed by the operating system, automatically preempts threads. There's no yield or coordination logic in the code. The OS scheduler decides. This is the most common form of concurrency in threads. So preemptive just means automatic switching handled by the OS. Cooperative scheduling, in contrast, relies on voluntary yielding. Tasks must explicitly yield control back to the scheduler. This model is used in many user space concurrency frameworks, like async await in Python and JavaScript or goroutines in Go. It has lower overhead because switches occur only at known points, and it is easier to reason about since task switches are deterministic. The big downside is that if a task forgets to yield, it can block the entire system. And this is a frequent bug among newcomers to asynchronous programming. So here's the example of cooperative concurrency, or explicit yielding with async await. Tasks must explicitly yield control using await. You can see in this line, await asyncio.sleep1 yields control back to the event loop. The event loop schedules the next coroutine to run. Unlike threads, this uses no kernel threads. It's all user space logic. It's much more lightweight and predictable for I.O. heavy workloads. So cooperative means you must yield manually using keywords like await, yield, etc. Now let's talk about the cost of concurrency. Concurrent programs must manage context switching, where the system saves the state of one task to let another one run. The overhead of this process is a critical factor in performance. In traditional thread-based systems, this switch is managed by the operating system kernel and can be costly. For every switch, the kernel must save the thread's complete execution context into a data structure, like a thread control block, or TCB. This state includes the program counter, which tracks the exact instruction the thread will execute next, the stack pointer, which points to the thread's personal stack containing local variables and function call information, the contents of all CPU registers, which holds the thread's immediate working data, and the thread's scheduling state and priority. This process requires a transition from user mode to kernel mode and back, which adds significant latency. In modern coroutine-based systems, or with async await, the cost is dramatically lower. Here, context switches happen entirely in user space, managed by the application's runtime or scheduler, and not the operating system. The state that needs to be saved is minimal, often just the instruction pointer, knowing where to resume, and only the specific CPU registers currently in use by that function. There is no expensive kernel transition, making it possible to switch between tens of thousands of coroutines far more efficiently than between threads. If you were ever curious how to build Redis, Docker, an HTTP server, a compiler, or a DNS server from scratch, I would highly recommend you check out Code Crafters, where you can learn how to build these complex developer tooling. This is my absolute favorite project-based learning platform that has support for over 20 different languages, including my favorite language Go. You can check out the description for a 40% off on all of their subscriptions. I'm excited to announce a special opportunity for our community this June. We're hosting a Build Your Own Shell Challenge with Code Crafters. For the entire month of June, you can take on this challenge for free. We'll have our own Coding Gopher community leaderboard to track our progress, and we'll be giving a special prize to the top finisher, plus three months of free access to Code Crafters. The prizes for this contest are AirPods Pro 2, an Aura Ring 4 Black, or a Keychron Q1 Pro. Also, anyone from our community who completes any Code Crafters challenge in June will get five bonus entries to win the 
Logitech MX Mechanical Combo Giveaway. So if you're ready to build, check out the link in the description. If you learned something new in this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more future content like this. If you want to further support the channel, I've left my Patreon link in the description as well. And as always, thank you very much for tuning into today's video, and happy coding!